I think it's important to try out loads of different strategies as well to kind of find what fits you because everyone has a different strategy in mind that works for them the best and if you haven't tried a few different ones then you don't know what's really going to work for you. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of people that speak about sort of lease options and rent to rent but they've never actually done it. Oh. So they might speak bad of it but they've never actually had the experience oh. themselves. I know. So and I it's think just, it's, it's, uh, don't talk about something yeah. you've not done. <laughs> yeah. Like serious. Yeah. yeah. I mean... It's just, it's painful to see it and it happens. And, and when you see people saying, and, and, and the thing is, people, some people say it can't be done because they've never done it or because they tried and failed. Yeah. You know, but, but if you haven't got first hand experience or something, don't talk about it. I yeah. said to you, you're asking me some questions about social housing and stuff. And I said, look, I have got, I've even got properties myself, mm -hmm. you know, that I've, I've put with housing associations, accounts direct. I don't talk about it because I don't deal with it. My wife deals with it. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah, it's not your area. No, you know more than yeah. I know about it, I'm sure, because it's <laughs> your bag. That's yeah. what you've really, and I know you started in your journey by, you know, you did some, my videos, I don't, did you, did you ever do the crash course? So that's one thing. So like, kind of coming off of the thing where people talk bad of like a strategy and stuff before like going on board and doing it themselves is the same thing with like the crash course. So like, I hadn't actually come on the crash course because people had told me not to go like, oh, it's like, you oh. know, with like every property training program, like yeah. everyone's always kind of like, oh, it's just a sales pitch and all this and all that. And I regret not coming on the crash course because mm. I think I would have been a lot more successful a lot earlier yeah. if I'd actually come and got the training instead of just learning purely off the videos. Yeah. Um, so oh, actually, people that say that are absolute morons because the crash course is the best property training program in my opinion on the planet. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> so exactly, to, yeah. to knock, I mean, even for the networking, if, if you're, yeah. If you're if you're so worried about something, you know, being hypnotized into yeah. buying something, come on, get real. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, people 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 try and tell you not to do something, whether it's yeah. a course or a property strategy or property at all. Don't yeah. go into property because it's risky. Well, hang on a minute. I, why would I listen to you when you're working for seventy hours a week? For, for, and you're on twenty six thousand pounds a year, and you're miserable, yeah. and you, you just look forward to the weekends. Yeah. Like, and why would I take advice from another you? Another thing that you mentioned there as well is about the networking side of things. Yeah. So even if you don't come away from like moving on to like a full time course with yourself or with anyone, regardless of what the course it is, you've got that network in there. So you've got people who are other investors. You've got other people who might be doing different types of property trades, whether it's builders, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. accountants, whatever it is. Yeah, um, networking is vital. Yeah, I exactly. Think getting environment, getting around people that are winning. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's so important to surround yourself with people where success feels normal because I believe environment is stronger than willpower. If you yeah. try and psych yourself up on your own, you're just going to keep pinging back to your old habits, your old routines. But if you're around winners, if you're around people that are financially independent, you know, yeah, have have a, a good financial literacy, mm -hmm. then that's going to rub off on you. Exactly. Yeah. So obviously we touched on your um, start the start of your journey, um, yeah. and obviously leveraging the people around you to you know get into the property ladder. Um, how did you manage to go from starting off with one property to then working on developments? Do you want to just yeah. kind of like give us a breakdown? Yeah, sure. So I mean, developments came a lot later. I, it, it depends how you define developments. I mean, technically, my first house in two thousand and nine was a mini development because yeah. I converted it into a HMO and we financed it. Yeah. But but. It wasn't a development like you're probably referring to in terms of some of the stuff I'm, I'm, I'm working on now. Yeah. Um, so deal packaging was the thing that really made me wealthy. Everyone always says, I've noticed that with every successful person that I've spoken to that's mm. gotten the experience that's gotten to this point, yeah. has always started off with, with deal packaging. Yeah, well, I didn't start with deal packaging. I actually became financially free. Mm -hmm. um, I built a you know, double-digit portfolio of my own first. Yeah. And it's funny because deal packaging, I won't be so arrogant as to say I created it, but at the time when I started deal packaging, it wasn't a thing. Yeah. Like no one was talking about it, no one was doing it. Um, how that happened, I'll tell you. So I, when I left Bible college, I was about to get married, I was doing quite well, I was making about six and a half thousand pounds a month passive from my properties that I'd built up with joint ventures and lease options and raised finance. So that was cool. Yeah. Highly leveraged. I was probably worth about half a million pounds. If you, if you added up everything and you saw it, I was probably about half a million pounds yeah. and I was 23. Mm -hmm. I was doing okay. Yeah. Working class than okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing good. Yeah. Right, that was about oh, six years ago. That, but the thing is, I'd learned how to pay people back, had money that I owed people. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, to be fair, that's going to take me a potential long time in rent. Unless I happen to be able to refinance, okay, so I might have to refinance, I've got a bit of money I need to pay back. Yeah. I was getting married, I wanted to have a decent wedding, mm -hmm. um, and I thought, actually, you know what, if I'm not careful, I might run out of cash. Yeah. 
I'm not doing great. Yeah. I'm actually not doing great. I'm, people might think I'm doing great, but actually, I'm not, I don't have to not worry about money. <laughs> because I actually, six and a half thousand pound a month is okay, but yeah. by the time you, you want to do a wedding, it all adds up. Yeah, you want to stop doing this, that, the other. I, I, I was setting up a charity. I was going out to Africa, yeah. Zimbabwe, Zambia, and I really wanted to give. So I'm thinking, I'm actually, I'm, I'm okay for myself as a single man, but if I want to start getting married, having kids, setting up charities, doing stuff, I'm actually not in a, I'm not rich. Yeah. So I wanted to start making some serious money, and I thought, right, I'm going to start. There's a couple of houses that I'd view that I wanted to buy that I couldn't afford to buy, I didn't have the money. I was like, oh man, what can I do? So I thought, I know what I'll do. What I'll do is I'll go out and I will view a bunch of houses, but I'll offer to bring someone with me. So I was yeah. like, hey, if you want to come with me and spend the day with me, mm -hmm. any houses, I thought my houses are so good, my investments I've lined up, I've got great relationships with the agents. So I thought anyone that wants to go ahead and buy, if this person wants to buy one of the properties, yeah. they can buy it, but they have to pay me a thousand pounds. Yeah. So here was the proposition. This was technically deal sourcing before I knew deal sourcing was a thing. Yeah. The proposition was, hey, next Tuesday, I'm spending the day in Liverpool. I'm viewing seven houses. My intention is to buy one for myself. Yeah. If you want to come with me and spend the day with me, it's free. Come with me. If you want to buy one of the other six, mm -hmm. right, which you will, yeah. you've got to give me a grant. Were these deals through estate agents or were they like off market Mostly deals? Mostly through, through estate agents. But, but well, both. There were estate agents, but off market as well. Yeah. A lot of them were, because I was in, I even became an estate agent just to make friends. Yeah. So some, some of them might be a case of, I got, I've just got the keys, it's not a right move yet. Yeah. You know, but mostly through estate agents. Yeah, yeah. And I believe you can get really good deals through agents. They're the golden nuggets, I, yeah. I think so. Because an agent wouldn't you know, take on a property unless it was worthwhile. Um, so I think if you're able to get, well, like you said before, it's even hit Zoopla or right move. Yeah, um, yeah it's great. Good opportunities there. Exactly. So I'd, so, so, I'd, so I'd speak to some investors. They'd come out with me in the day for the car, in the car. And I'd be like, I want that one. And then they'd be like, oh, I love that one. And then I'd go, no problem, give them my grand. They'd yeah. give me a grand and they'd go and buy it. That's how it rolled. As time progressed, I started bringing two people with me. Mm -hmm. I'd line up 10 houses, three people, four people. And it got to the point where there wouldn't be enough deals for the people. And then I thought, actually, you know what? Forget bringing anyone with me. I'll go out on myself. Yeah. I'll offer and I'll package them up. And then I'll send an email out to everybody. Investors list, yeah. And then the first time I sent an email, I made six and a half thousand pounds. Wow. And I sold three houses all in one night and I hadn't even spent a day with anybody. And I was like, wow. That was around about 2014. Okay. Yeah. I thought, wow. Yeah. Maybe early 2015. I can't remember exactly, but it was, it, was, it was around that time. I thought, wow, this is interesting. I then went on to package and sell 200 deals. I made wow. um, a half a million pounds doing that. Yeah. That made me a millionaire. Yeah. Because I was already worth a few hundred pounds. Yeah. Put the money into property. That made me a millionaire. And um, it also grew me a massive list of investors mm -hmm. and money's in the list. Yeah. Then I started joint venturing with the investors. You know, so, so and sort of snowballing it. So how did I get into development to answer your question? I think it was as I got more money, yeah. as I got more investors and more money, I started, I started looking for bigger deals. Yeah, 